Good morning, love life, family, and friends all over the world. It's Resurrection Sunday. Let us celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. We are so glad you joined us. We have the following announcements this week. Our verse for the week is Revelations chapter 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the key of hell and of death. Our 2021 church motto is forward in faith that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And don't forget, join us online Wednesday evenings for Bible study at 7 p.m. on Facebook. May the word enlighten you, encourage you, empower you. Prayer is the most intimate time that we can have with God. So please call in at 7.14 p.m. on Mondays and Fridays for seven minutes of prayer. And on Wednesday morning, prayer at 7.14 a.m. You can dial in at 712-832-8305 with an access code of 481-3100-POUND. Get ready, get ready, get ready for our 24th church anniversary service. It is Sunday, April 11th. Reverend Dr. Marvin Anthony Moss will be joining us from Salem United Methodist Church in Harlem, New York. The topic is anchored in the substance of faith. And it is so important that we uplift one another in prayer during times of need. Please pray for Brother Rodney Caldwell, Minister Doris Dudley, Elder Michael Durham, Sister Ruth Diane Fielder, Mother Ann Harrell, Jerome Henley, George Prothro, John Smith, and Elder Barbara Thomas. It's birthday time. A great big happy birthday blessing to Chaz Miller, Tristan Webb, Elder Barbara Harris Thomas, Minister Johnny Johnson, and Mother Lizzie Bryant. On the count of three, you know what to do. Happy birthday! For membership or prayer requests, please email us at info at lovelifecfc.org or call 404-241. 1499 and we will get back with you immediately. Thank you kindly. And please visit our website for announcements and givings at www.lovelifecfc.org. That's www.lovelifecfc.org. We wish you a happy Resurrection Sunday. Have a safe and productive week. God bless you. Welcome and thank you for joining us at Love Life Christian Fellowship Church with the ministry gifts of Dr. Grace C. Washington, where we preach, provide, and prepare God's people to love life. Continue to listen until the end of this broadcast for information about our weekly services and how to connect with us to become a member. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. 
This is the day that the Lord has made, and we certainly have reason to rejoice today. This is the worship service of Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Grace C. Washington and our first man, Deacon Robert Washington. We celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every Sunday at Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, but today is a special celebration. This is the holiday that we've set aside in the world that is called Easter. The world celebrates Easter with Easter bunnets and Easter baskets and, and, and new clothing and candy in the pews. But today things are a little bit different, but we can now focus our, all of our attention on the true celebration of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Gospels say that two women went to what they thought was the grave of Jesus to anoint his body, but they were disappointed that he wasn't there because the tomb was empty. Jesus Christ had already defeated death. And so today we celebrate that he rose again, that we have a resurrected Savior. He got up and we celebrate. We can celebrate that death did not defeat him, the grave did not hold him. We celebrate that resurrected power that's available to all of us because he came, he died, and he rose again. Now let us enter into this worship service with an air of celebration, rejoicing and praising our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We will now be led in prayer by Minister Jamal Webb. Have a blessed and wonderful Easter Sunday. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And God, since we know that you are in all the earth, we know that you are here with us today. As we celebrate this resurrection, as we celebrate the rising up, God, we ask that you rise up in our homes. We ask that you rise up on our jobs. We ask that you rise up in our family and our finances. We ask that you rise up in every area of our life, God. And as you rise up, we know that you got up with all power in your hand. Not some power, but all power. And it is your name that speaks power. Not only power, but your name speaks peace. It speaks love. It speaks joy, God. And so we ask that the name of Jesus abide in our hearts. That the name of Jesus abide in our minds, in our homes, in every area of our life, God. We ask that you continue to be with us that you move by your power in this service, God. We celebrate this Easter Sunday, God, and we celebrate you, God. We ask that you continue to be with us, God, that you continue to be in every area of our life, God. We know that all things, not some things, but all things work together for our good because we serve a good God. We serve a living God. We serve a living Savior, God. So move by your power, God. Let the spirit resonate in this service. And as it resonates in the service, God, let it resonate in our hearts and our minds. Continue to go forth in our life. We ask that you be a present help in the time of trouble. Whatever it is that we have going on, it will work out. I declare and decree favor today, God. I declare and decree a miracle and a breakthrough, God. I declare and decree that there will be healing today with this Easter Sunday, God. We love on you, God, because you first loved us. And so we come today, God, with expectancy in our heart. We expect great things in year 2021, God, for this is still the year of yes. Yes to our dreams, yes to our goals, and yes to our visions. And God, as you give us a yes, God, we give you a yes today. 
We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Yes, we will obey, God. Just move today like never before, God. We invoke your presence and we ask you to be here. This wonderful, purposeful, powerful, and Easter Sunday, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and the glory. And we seal this prayer with an it is so. For we believe that it is so. Whatever it is we ask, whatever it is we need, it is so today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. came as dead men.
looking for the living among the dead. He is not here. He is not here. For he has risen as he said. For he has risen as he said. Come see the place where the Lord used to lay. Remember how he said, while he was yet in Galilee? Remember how he said, while he was yet in Galilee? What did he say, Sopranos? Happy Easter, everybody. See what I did there? It's me. It's Minister Fee. And I am here to read the scripture on this Resurrection Sunday. We're coming out of the King James Version this morning. The book of John, the 20th chapter. And it's verses 24 through 31. Here goes. But Thomas, one of the 12 called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. The mighty word of God for his mighty people. Now hop along. Love Life, it's time to give. And on this Easter Sunday, we celebrate the fact that God gave it all. And in his word, he requires a portion of our resources that quite frankly, in comparison, is very small. You see, today we celebrate the fact that Jesus' existence in human form on this earth ceased. But by celebrating, let's be obedient to his word by giving 10% of our increase. Love life, you know what to do. 
we ask that you give up your tithes and offerings and not just because it is a rule um, just because the Lord says so but because you truly love the Lord and you want to give back unto him a very minute portion of what he has given to you you see on your screen the four ways that you can give so love life let's be obedient and give unto God let us pray dear Heavenly Father Lord thank you for all you've done thank you for this wonderful day Lord that you gave of yourself for us Lord we will be obedient by giving back to you a portion of what is yours Lord and we will give back unto you cheerfully Lord because we know that you are a great God and we love you Lord thank you for who you are what you what you've done and Lord what you continue to do in our lives continue to bless us bless the pastor bless this church and bless all those within the sound of my voice and those who cannot even hear me Lord we love you we praise you we honor you amen
Good morning. What a beautiful day to lift up the name of Jesus. I want to greet all of you with the joy of the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we celebrate and proclaim that we serve a risen Savior. I'm going to ask you to bow with me wherever you might be right now and let us open our hearts and minds through prayer that God might speak through his word this morning. Bow with me, if you please. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of this Easter Sunday. And even in the midst of pandemic and virus, recognizing your Christ and that you reign forever. Oh God, we thank you for your presence in our lives and the power and the hope that it brings. My prayer today, oh God, is that the message, your word, would search our hearts and minds that are anxious and worried and concerned and give us a foundation of faith upon which to stand. God, we truly thank you for it. We ask that you bless the reading, the preaching, the living, and the fruit of your word. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please keep your Bible open to John chapter 20. Hear God's word gives us a story of the Lord's resurrection, O oh God, on the very first Easter Sunday. On this Easter Sunday morning, I want to encourage you that Jesus is alive forevermore. Easter is one of the biggest and one of the most significant observances of the Christian faith comes out of a borrowed tomb of all places. Easter, with all of the joy and all of the hope that it brings, was set in a graveyard. If Easter is about anything, it is about the good news that comes out of a graveyard. And it is from the graveyard that Jesus arose. This morning, we will let, we will tell everyone, we will let you know one of the subplots that developed as this miracle unfolded. In the day's gap between all oh, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, we can but wonder the mood in Jerusalem. The noise, the noise, the noise, the noise of Calvary had died down. The weeping, the wailing, and the tears that had soaked the ground at Golgotha had dried up. The resurrection of Christ is a fact of the utmost importance. If it had not, if God, if Jesus had not risen, there would have been an end to his mission. The scattered disciples and other followers of Jesus, including the women who prepared the tomb, had time for passive reflection and to try to make some sense of what had occurred. The things Jesus said at the Last Supper, if they were present, his arrest and the subsequent King Aru court conviction and the incredibly barbaric treatment their Lord was subjected to. The disciples, upon following Peter, had gone into seclusion in the upper room where they had so often eaten and drunk with their Lord when observing the feast of the Passover. The first day, the first day of, of, of a new week and the first Sunday of a new month had come to pass. The resurrection, oh my God. This Sabbath was marked by a great deal of shock, of, of much shock as they sought to reconcile what they had seen with their perceptions of justice not to mention their grief. I can't imagine what the disciples must have felt as they watched those Roman soldiers nail Jesus to the cross. They probably felt every negative emotion known to man, hatred toward the Pharisees, disgust toward the Roman soldiers, disappointment in Jesus for not being who he said he was. The disciples had a wonderful meeting with the Lord that night. 
but poor Thomas missed the big event. And today we'll look at Thomas's story. Although all of the gospels mention Thomas, it's only the gospel of John that records any of Thomas's words. The Holy Spirit did not inspire John to include this account to embarrass Thomas. Rather, it's recorded because God has important things to teach us about our doubts and what kind of seeing really brings us joy. I like to shine the sermonic spotlight on a subject that we all can be reassured of. Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is alive and well. You've heard the reading of verses 24 through 31 of John for our concentration read by Minister Felicia Harris. We will use as our text verse 25. The New International Version reads, So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. As we listen to the word today, there are four takeaways. We will see Thomas's unbelief, how Thomas had an encounter because he was in the right place and the blessing that was spoken to Thomas. Takeaway number one, Thomas didn't believe that Jesus was alive. Oh my God, look at it in verse 25. The disciples were now marked men for the false report that had dared to smash the seal, the seal, the seal of Rome on the tomb had leaked out and their lives were now in jeopardy. Fearful did they now huddle together in their quarters, reminiscing old times and brooding over the crucifixion and the death of their Lord. But then all of a sudden, Christ stood amongst them and in his quiet, strong, low level tone, he greeted them with his usual salutation, peace be unto you. Naturally, they were terrified for his unexpected appearance made them jumpy. Not since the night of the, 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 the great storm on the lake when Jesus had come to them walking across the wind's whipped waves had they been so distraught. The question that raced through all of their minds was, is this really the master? For you see, they were not really sure. But then he spoke to them again. Why are you so troubled? He looked at them with affection and asked, why, why, why do questions arise? Why do questions arise in your minds? He stretched his hands toward them in a gesture of goodwill and reassurance. See, my wounded hands and feet, it's me. He smiled and warmly invited them to touch him. Come on, handle me and see that I'm not just a spirit being. I have a body of flesh and bones. Oh, and he told them, let us eat. They prepared and they ate with him. Gently, they ran their hands over his hands and his fingers, their fingers over his feet. Yes, it was him. They slapped one another on the back and shook heads in wonderment. He is alive. He is alive. Oh, what a glorious experience it must have been for them to be among the first to see the resurrected Savior. Oh my God. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Only 10 disciples were there to witness the glorious uh, 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 event. Jesus, we know that Judas, Judas had betrayed him and committed suicide. And yes, the record also shows that Thomas was not there. But when the disciples found Thomas later and declared, Thomas, we've seen Jesus just like some today. Thomas didn't believe, even as they kept telling him, 
Oh, yes, Thomas, he is alive. He continued to argue with their testimony, disappointed and frustrated. Finally, Thomas said, I won't believe until I see the nail-scarred hands and touch his side. He was frustrated because he had believed Jesus was the Messiah who would deliver them from Rome, the son of David and the king of Jews. He was disappointed because when Jesus was crucified, he ran and fled and forsook Jesus. And for this, he was ashamed. Oh, he was ashamed. Thomas must have thought, Maybe Jesus isn't who he claimed to be. Maybe he was just a prophet, a, a teacher, a man. He can't be God because he's dead. Sometimes we prefer to see Jesus just as a man because he doesn't always do what we think he should. But let me tell you something about God. He knows what's best. Oh, he knows best, better than we do. And if we'll trust and obey him, he'll make it turn out for our good. Oh, how much, how much Thomas lost by not being with his fellow disciples when Jesus came. After he had seen Jesus crucified, he did the worst thing that a depressed man could do. He went away to broad in a corner by himself to distort the proportion of truth and hug his despair. He separated himself from the rest of the brethren. Oh my God, that's a danger. He separated himself from the rest of the brethren. And because he was not there, he lost what they got, the privilege of seeing the risen Lord. This is the mistake that so many people make that when troubles come, when difficulties surface, they stay away from the church. So many times have I had members to tell me, Pastor, I know I haven't been to church in a long time because things are just not right at home or I'm having so many problems right now. But as soon as I get everything worked out, I'll be back. But you see, you, you see, my brothers and sisters, that's when you need to be in church and involved more than ever. If the sermons don't do you any good or the prayers of the saints and the songs of praise don't help, the brotherhood about fellowship with sisters and brothers, oh, they will do you a lot of good. My, 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 we think about fellowship that every child of God should always strive to keep it with one another. And although we can't physically be together these days, there is still consolation in the virtual fellowship of seeing each other and knowing that we're still here for each other. As it was, as it was, Thomas was not in fellowship of the brethren when Jesus came. And when they went looking for him to tell of the amazing and remarkable miracle of seeing Jesus, Thomas wouldn't believe. He said, that doesn't make any sense at all. Do you all think I'm a fool? They said, no, 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 Thomas, we're not playing you for a fool or anything of the sort. We felt the wounds, we ate with him, we ate honeycomb. All the fulfillment of the prophecy we saw. It's true. The Lord is risen. He is alive. And Thomas, we have seen him. Unexcited, still skeptical and frustrated. In our text, verse 25, Thomas blurted out, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails and the place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. You know, too many times, too many times, too many of us base our belief upon that which we can physically see, hear, and touch when actually really uh, uh, does it not abide necessarily in those things that, we, that can be seen, heard, or physically touched. There are so many things we cannot see, that we cannot hear, or we cannot feel, but we know they're real. 
sorrow and grief cannot be seen with the physical eye, cannot be handled with the physical hands, and cannot be heard with the physical ear. But yet, sorrow and grief are real. And so it is with our God. For I can't see him. I can't hear him. I can't physically touch him. But thank God, all oh, today, I know that he's real. Yes, I agree with the traditional gospel that says real, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Hallelujah. And so it was that Thomas refused to believe that Jesus was real without seeing. Because he was not present, his absence resulted in his doubt. The slaughter of Jesus outside of Jerusalem had been so gruesome that it was uh, uh, all but humanly impossible for Thomas to imagine uh, a resurrection of Jesus' body. We are not told why Thomas was absent, but we are merely told that his absence made him insecure and doubtful where the others were secure. Let's not assume too quickly that we should have responded differently had we seen what Thomas had seen. But even as such, our takeaway number two tells us Thomas encountered that Jesus was alive. Eight days later, the disciples that were shut away behind closed doors, when suddenly Jesus appeared and stood in the midst and again said to them, peace be unto you. This time Thomas was there and Jesus turned directly toward him and used the very same words that Thomas had demanded in verse 27. Thomas, here's my hands. Look at them. Here's my side. Feel it. That tells me that Jesus knew all about Thomas's unbelief and he knows about yours. He knows about mine. But that doesn't stop him from being who he is. Your doubt and your unbelief doesn't bother. They don't, it doesn't bother Jesus. Jesus already revealed himself to his disciples. But he made another appearance just for Thomas. Though the doors were shut and locked, Jesus walked through just so Thomas could have a personal encounter with him. And Thomas had this personal encounter because of our takeaway number three. Thomas was in the right place to know that Jesus was alive. I said Thomas was in the right place to know that Jesus was alive. Thomas had to live in doubt for a whole week. And although he, he, he uh, 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 did not, he did not uh, uh, believe Although he did a lot of things wrong, he did one thing right. He came back to the church. He got back in a place where he could be touched. I know a lot of people who say they don't like to miss church because they don't feel right all week. And this pandemic has certainly been proof. We have had to practice social distancing for a great length of time. Going to church is not something that we do for somebody else. Going to church is something that we do for ourselves. We go to church to nurture our faith and as well as to encourage one another. Help me, Lord. Thomas missed out seeing Jesus alive the first time because he was troubled and broken. He missed out on the encouragement that comes from the presence of Jesus. His doubts were so strong that he said he wouldn't believe in the resurrected Jesus unless he saw and felt his scars. Oh, thank God. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere along the way, Thomas allowed his faith to be shaken and he left the church. It pays to stay in church. It pays to be in church when the doors are open. The first time Jesus appeared, I told you Thomas wasn't there and missed seeing Jesus. Now 
I ask the question to you, how many miracles have you missed out on because you weren't there when Jesus showed up? Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together, I'll be in the midst. That's why you need to be in the house of God every chance you get. You never know when Jesus is going to show up. Oh, you never know when he's going to come to show up and show out. No matter what, rush to the house of God and get your blessing. We know that on Jesus' first appearance, Thomas was absent. He didn't believe. But Thomas had a personal encounter and saw Jesus resurrected uh, for himself. Why? Because he was in the right place. And because of that, we see in our takeaway number four, the blessing that Jesus spoke proved that Jesus was alive. Jesus spoke a powerful word to Thomas. In verse 27, he told him, be not faithless, but believing. Thomas was walking down a dangerous road. The disciples had witnessed to him time and again to say Jesus is alive. But Thomas refused to accept their testimony. Jesus was saying, in other words, stop becoming or uh, being an unbeliever. You're running the risk of becoming faithless. You've carried your belief too unbelief too long, too far. It's time to stop. We need faith. Yes, we need faith. Why? Because without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, someone today needs to stop doubting and decide to trust and believe because in life, I don't care how much you know, there's going to come a time that you've got to believe. You've got to have faith and trust in the Lord. I don't care what you got or how much one day it's going to get down to nobody but you and the Lord. Oh, you're going to need faith, trust, and belief. If it wasn't for the Lord, where would you be? I tell you today and I ask you today, why don't you unlock the door of your heart and let the Lord reveal himself to you? Why, pastor? I tell you because he, Jesus, is alive and well. When Thomas saw Jesus and put his hands in his hand, he fell on his knees and he said, my Lord and my God. That was a statement of faith. Thomas was saying, you really are God. You're the Messiah. You're the sovereign of the universe who you proclaim to be. Uh-huh. And he spoke in verse 29. He said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believed, but blessed are they that have not seen me and yet believe. Jesus said that because he knew there would be others down through the centuries and even some in 2021 who have never seen him but would still believe in him. I tell you, I tell you, I've never physically seen him. One day I will, but I want to go on record that I believe. Yes, I believe and that I am a believer. Let me tell you why I live like I live. I live like I live because I believe in the risen Jesus. I believe he was born, lived, died, was buried, rose again, and he's coming back. And that's why Peter later wrote in 1 Peter, the first chapter, verses 8 and 9, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with him. That is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. It's a powerful thing to be a believer. I tell you, I believe, I believe in his person. He is God. I believe in his power. He does still change lives. I believe in his promise. He will fill people with the Holy Ghost and he's coming again. The Bible says, if you believe in him, you shall not perish. If you believe in him, you will receive remission 
remission, oh my God, for your sins. If you believe in him, you will never hunger and thirst again. If you believe in him, you won't abide in darkness. I said, if you believe in him, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. If you believe in him, you can overcome the world. Praise be to God. Thomas had walked beside Jesus for three years. He heard Christ's teaching and saw him perform many miracles, but he still struggled to believe he had risen from the grave. But after he touched Christ's wound and responded with the words, my Lord and my God, Jesus makes an important comment in verse 31, because you have seen, you believe, Thomas, we Thank the Lord today. Jesus is talking about you. He's talking about me. Uh -huh. We didn't have the luxury of walking with Jesus or touching his scars. We live thousands of hundreds of years removed from the events recorded in the Gospels. And Jesus recognizes the faith that it takes for us to believe. That's why he pronounces a special blessing on us for trusting in him. Oh my God. God gave a special blessing just because we trust in him. You ought to text, tweet, or shout there's a special blessing on me in your comment, your virtual space. Why? Just because I trust him, God has pronounced a special blessing on me. Oh, glory to God. And you ask, why do you believe, Pastor? I believe because there's an empty grave in Jerusalem because there was a resurrection. Talk back to me somebody. If you believe that he's alive and well, you ought to comment that to somebody. Text it, tweet it, or shout it in your virtual space. Shout Jesus is alive and well so your next door neighbor can hear you. Shout Jesus is alive and well so the student studying somewhere at the Cal Perimeter College or Georgia State will lift their head out of that book and say, oh yes, I know Jesus is alive and well. You ought to shout Jesus is alive and well till the Energizer bunny <laughs> or oh, that bunny bunny battery run down. You ought to shout Jesus is alive and well. Now I can hear Thomas witnessing. Oh my God, because he had that great pronouncement upon his life. He's telling the world that Jesus came out of the grave. And if he came out of that grave, that gives me hope to believe that I can come out too. Go ahead, Thomas. I too know that Jesus is alive and well. Can I be a witness for the Lord? I believe that there will be a rapture. The trumpet will sound. The Lord will sin from heaven with a shout. The dead in Christ will rise first. Oh yes, I believe because the Bible says we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. There is a new Jerusalem and a new place, a place called heaven. There's a place that he's gone to prepare. Those who serve him will reign with him there. Praise be to God. I believe, I believe that Jesus is alive and well. Christ's resurrection works in the human heart to resurrect it from sin and death. And John ends this account by saying to all in verse 31, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Ah, before I leave you, I must tell you, that one encounter changed everything. What made Thomas believe? He had a personal encounter with the Lord. And when he saw Jesus, that one encounter changed everything. He went from faithless to faithful, unbelieving to believing, from doubting to 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 do delight. Come on, somebody. That's that 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 is what one encounter can do for you. If you believe that one counter, that one touch can do it, you ought to tell somebody, text somebody, shout in your virtuous face, and tell somebody that one count encounter with Jesus will change your life. You can have an encounter too with Jesus on this resurrection Sunday and become a believer. You must come to Christ in heaven at the right hand of God as Thomas did come to him on earth believing that you might have life 
through his name. Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. He displayed that power everywhere he went. And I believe in the power of God. And I'm not ashamed of it. Oh, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Someone listening right now needs to stop doubting and decide, decide today to trust, to trust and believe. I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're hesitant, doubting, or what kind of problem you may have today. But let me assure you that the resurrection Paul says it can save you, it will heal you, deliver you, and set you free. If you just make up your mind to believe, I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. We don't have to doubt as Thomas did and can all take hold of what the disciples were proclaiming. Jesus is alive and well. Let me tell you this and I'll leave you alone. And because Jesus is alive and well, I can face each day standing on the promises of God. Oh, because Jesus is alive, ah, I can get up if I mess up and start all over again. Because he's alive, there's no defeat that I cannot turn into victory. Because he's alive, there is no failure that can conquer my soul and hold me down. I said, because he's alive, I can face tomorrow. Because he's alive, I know he holds the future. I know it because I've tried and for myself. I've experienced it for myself. And I know he can save anybody. I tell you, the Lord is alive and well. I tell you again, the tomb is empty. He has shaken off death and marched out of the grave. And the fact that the tomb was empty meant that all their hope was not in vain. The empty tomb completes the plan of God for all mankind. God ordained the whole course of Jesus' life and death. Let me tell you, the scripture declared that now Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Oh, I thank the Lord. I want to turn this thing loose. Our Lord was lied about, but lies couldn't hold him down. He is risen. His opponents were jealous of him, but jealousy couldn't hold him down. He is risen. He was slandered, but slander could not hold him down. Tell somebody he is risen. In the end, he was killed, but not even death, the grave, and all the powers of hell and the forces of darkness could hold him down. Oh, you ought to tell somebody, shout it, that he is risen. Yes, he was knocked down, but not knocked out. He is risen. The empty tomb declared, oh my God, yes it did. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Jesus snatched the sting from death and turned around and snatched the victory from the grave. He took the keys from the devil and from hell, then stood out on resurrection ground with the keys in one hand and the victory in the other hand and declared all power is given to me in heaven and in earth. My God, my God, my brothers and sisters, I know I've got to leave it alone, but I want to offer Christ to you today. He is risen. Thomas became a believer. I am indeed a believer and Jesus wants you to be a believer. But there is something very powerful about a believer. I believe in his promise. I believe when they tell me that the world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And if you want to go to heaven and live like Jesus, you've got to believe. And if you really believe, there are some things you're going to do. You will repent and change your life. You will be baptized and believe. You will experience the Holy Ghost. Oh my God, on today, do you believe Jesus is alive? Have you invited him in your life? Have you encountered the resurrected Savior? Today is a great day to give yourself to him so he can guide you, direct your path of your life and reign Lord of your life. Let me tell you, COVID doesn't reign over my life. Sickness doesn't reign over my life. 
but Jesus done. He's the one who opened blinded eyes and loose stammering tongues and healed the sick and raised the dead and who calmed the raging sea and claimed that it would be Calvary with all its pain and shame that would glorify and exalt him. It was this same Jesus who said in Revelation 1.18, I am alive forevermore. I am with you. I am faithful. I have authority. My brothers and sisters, you should have some hope and know that Jesus reigned. You should have some hope and know that he lives, that he's alive and well. My, 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 Jesus is alive and well. This is the message of Easter to those who live in a crisis. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, in the midst of all that we sense, in the midst of all that we see and hear, remind us, oh God, that Christ was dead and is alive forevermore. And because of that, we know that you are with us. Oh, children of God, God is with us. We know that he is faithful. We know you have authority that human hands cannot hold. God, we know that we have hope that one day that it shall be what was. We know, oh God, what you can reign. You can reign forever and change whatever is going on. You can reign forever and change what we are going through. God, we trust you for that. We believe you for that because Jesus is alive and well. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And now let us gather your family and come around your prepared communion table so we can fellowship together, one with another. God bless. brothers and sisters, we have just enjoyed a wonderful Easter Sunday morning worship service. And now we all come to the Lord's table from the comfort of our homes and with other Christians all over the world. And we come to do this in remembrance of him. And so we bless the Lord that on that Thursday night when he had the last supper with the disciples, he told them what was to come that week. He told them that he was on his way to his death. And we thank God. We thank God that we don't have to sorrow like they did, but we can do this with joy. And so in that night, he took the bread, the loaf, and he broke it. He broke it and he gave and blessed it. And he gave unto his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. And in the same manner, after blessing the cup, he gave unto the disciples letting them know this is the blood of the New Testament shed for the remission of sins. 
This is the blood that the lamb that was slain for our remission and for our forgiveness. He said, take, drink you all of it. He told them as often as you eat of my body and drink of my blood. You remember what I did for you at Calvary. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we thank God that we were able to come to the table of the Lord. We thank God that he reminded us that his body was given for our healing and his blood for our forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. We bless God. And we want to bless God that on this Resurrection Sunday, that we can thank God that we have worshiped together. We have come to the table together. And now, go and enjoy the rest of this day. Fellowship with one another, knowing that we are one body and we have had one meal together today. We thank God. And also remember that this is symbolic to let us know he is coming back again. To God be the glory. So let us rejoice. Let us do what he told them to do. Go to the mount. We don't have a mount of olive, but we can go and sing a hymn. Sing it to the glory of God. Oh, giving him praise, honor for the victory of this day. We bless God. God bless each of you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Go in peace. Thank you for joining today's service. Remember, for online giving at Love Life, go to pushpay.com or text Love Life to 77977. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to the address at the end of this broadcast. We invite you to join us for any of our online services, which include Sunday School at 9 o'clock a.m., Sunday Morning Worship at 10 o'clock a.m., Wednesday Night Bible Study at 7 o'clock p.m. Join us at 7.14 a.m. each Wednesday for corporate prayer by calling 712-832-8305. The access code is 481-3100. For weekly announcements and more information, please visit our website at www.lovelifecfc.org or visit the Love Life app. Love Life Christian Fellowship Church, where we make people our priorities.